Welcome to Talking Pictures Trivia as we venture into our sub-series, Talking TV Trivia. Whenever there's a TV show that catches our attention, this podcast picks a season and explores each episode through trivia. I'm today's host, Nick, and with me is... Tom... KJ. And I'm Chris. Chris has continued to graciously volunteer to join us through this whole season of The Mandalorian. He loves Star Wars. He wants to talk more about Star Wars. So we're good. For those joining us for the first time, we start off each episode with four trivia questions to determine who will earn today's trivia crown. Then we follow it up with our theme discussion associated with the TV episode, in this case involving season one of Disney's The Mandalorian. KJ, tell us about today's TV episode. Today we'll be discussing episode five, also known as chapter five, The Gunslinger. This episode was directed by Dave Filoni and written by Dave Filoni. There will be spoilers for The Mandalorian up through Episode 5. Feel free to press pause until you are caught up. In Chapter 5 of The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian crash lands on a fan-favorite planet, Tatooine. Yes, this is the planet we first meet Luke. Yes, this is the planet we first meet Anakin. Yes, this is the planet we see the last Mandalorian we are familiar with meet his demise. Looking to get some credits to pay for his ship to be repaired by a sassy mechanic, the Mandalorian takes bounty. Long story short, a bounty hunter and a mercenary are killed, and the Mandalorian pays for his ship to be repaired. The Mandalorian learns he can leave the child for up to one episode at a time to go have an adventure. Also, one of the bounty hunters in this summary may not have died as previously assumed. Because Chris has won every episode to date, We thought we'd switch it up a little bit going forward. So we've decided that the co-hosts, KJ and Tom, will be teaming up against Chris and his wealth of Star Wars knowledge. So we'll see how this goes. Let's jump into the rapid fire questions. Each question will be worth the same amount of points as the number of the question. So we're going one, two, three, four. It's time for question one. How does the Mandalorian respond to the other bounty hunter's request in the opening dogfight sequence? Oh, locked in. Locked in. I'm, this is going to go badly poor already. I'm locked in, I think. <laughs> okay. I like starting with KJ. So let's do it. I'm pretty sure he said, that's my line. Tom? Uh, so the I'll, I'll give the whole recitation. The person who's pursuing him, the bounty hunter, says, I could bring you in warm or I could bring you in cold. The Mandalorian somehow breaks in space despite being in a frictionless, frictionless vacuum. Uh, this, the, the bounty hunter's spaceship goes past him. He shoots it down and he says, that's my line. Chris. All right. I did lock in with that's my line because he says, I'll, I can bring you in warmer. I can bring you in cold. But I didn't know if that's what you were looking for. But that's that's what I oh, had in mind. Okay. Points for everyone. We're winning. Oh, yes. Chris, you yeah. suck so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're so Keep bad. Keep in mind, this. the points are equal to the number of the questions. So getting the first one is only one point each. So. Double, you, got, you doubled up on me. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> It's time for question two. When the child walks off the razor crest in the spaceport of Moss Eisley on Tatooine, what noise does he make? The hell is a Moss Eisley? That's the spaceport on Tatooine that is pretty famous for the scum and villainy. Oh, okay. Uh, Locked in. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lock in. Yeah, locked in with it with a joke. Tej, start us off with a joke. McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Cool. <laughs> Chris? I think he makes the same sound that Obi-Wan does when Obi-Wan is in, in the canyon, but I'm not, I, I, I 100% don't know that for sure. The points go to Chris, although Tom was very close, but it wasn't, what? there wasn't enough roar to it, okay? What is it the was noise? The, it, it is exactly the same noise that Ben Kenobi makes in episode four when he's trying to scare away the Tusken Raiders. It is the roar of a crate dragon. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> we talked about crate dragons in a prior we, episode. Well, yeah. which, which one is the crate dragon? Which episode? 
So ep- episode four. episode four, the the movie episode four, when C three PO is out in the middle of the desert and he sees the Jawa sand crawl and he's waving and like I've been saved. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a bone. There's a skeleton of bones in the sand. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be a Kray dragon. Oh, okay. It's time for question three. While trying to entice Toro McCallican to turn on the Mandalorian, where does Fennec Shan say she has to meet her rendezvous? Oh, locked in. Locked in. Come on, Gage, you remember, right? No, not at all. So we're saying oh. this is when the the rookie is talking with the, the mercenary mm-hmm. and she's trying to convince him to turn. She says where she's going to go meet somebody? Yeah. Yes. All right, locked in with the, with another another guess. <laughs> Good news, your points are getting added to Tom. So. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. And vice versa. Okay, KJ, start us up. Uh, was it just another reference? Was it Mos Espa? Tom? I said the canyon. Chris? It was definitely Mos Espa. The points go to KJ and oh. Chris. I, nice. What the hell? What is, Mos Espa is the... the Dun 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 dun. No, that's that's, that's most likely. What the, what's most Espa? Most Espa is where the pod race was in the very first uh, prequel. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. It's, it's well, going back to that. that that's what <laughs> the pod you. racing. Okay. Thank, well, good. Good job, KJ. Thanks. <laughs> Every everybody's favorite movie and everybody's favorite scene, right? The pod racing scene in episode one. Hey, the yes. sound in that scene is pretty great. Uh, there, there's... Especially the extended edition <laughs> where the pod race goes on for an hour. 40 minutes, yeah. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. The the sound quality and the the artisticness of it is fantastic, but just from a plot standpoint, it was it was terrible. <laughs> but Star Wars always does good sound, so you gotta they mm. they, they they knock that out of the park for sure. Have we noticed a, a trend to the answers here? This is pod racing. <laughs> is it about location or it's about references to or to the movies you're on the right track even adding up tom and cage's points chris is presently in the lead by one all so right we, let's go for here, it KJ. here it is, is it. here it is all right we're gonna get it i feel it it's time for question four after the mandalorian dispatches the turncoat calican where does the mechanic Peli Mato say to dispose of the evidence to her repair droids. Locked in. Locked oh, in. I think I'm locked in, yeah. Do we have competition on this one? KJ? Over by the Wombats in Beggar's Canyon. <laughs> Tom? I had Beggar's Canyon too. I, I remember that one. That was like a throwback. Chris? Beggar's Canyon. It is Beggar's Canyon, but this creates a, a dilemma. It's too close. It's too close. We got to go to the bonus round here. Bonus. Bonus round. Because you right. only won due to combined points. Moss. Moss. So Cantina. we got to go all the, we gotta go all the, the way to the end here. I all locked the way that to answer the end. in. I'm already okay. locked in. Yeah. It's time for a bonus question. What does Pelly call the Mandalorian? Is Pelly is Pelly Amy Sedaris? Yes. Okay. What is she The called? mechanic. <laughs> uh, I'll lock something in. I don't remember. Locked in, I think. And this is a callback, right? That's the theme of this. If one of you beat him outright, I wouldn't have went to bonus. But because it was only due to the combined score, that's why we went to bonus. All right, locked in with another joke. I apologize, Tom. No, I'm, okay. I'm locked in with a random guess. KJ? Boba T. Tom? She calls him a fet? Chris? I thought it could have been a, a wombat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, nobody wins that question, or no one gets that question right. The, the, the episode will go to KJ and Tom. Woo. The actual answer was womp rat. That was the whole reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, was making, oh, I lost. I was making a joke. <laughs> oh, no. I, I was thinking womp rat. I said womp. Oh. So my bonus question was not only a callback in Star <laughs> Wars, it was a callback into a prior one of our episodes. <laughs> Well, well played, gentlemen. Well you, played. You played it flawlessly because that is what I thought KJ was going to say. 
<laughs> so wait, she calls the Mandalorian a womp rat, not the yeah. The when, when when he's going away and he's like fix my ship and all that, he just goes womp rat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm. So yes, uh, as you can probably see through the different questions here, the topic for the week here will be callbacks and fan service when we get back from these brief messages from one of our valued sponsors. Kaiba Knives, the most efficient tool in kitchens throughout the galaxy, are proud to announce the inclusion of a revolutionary advancement in admitted technology in all our models. Chefs have the full capability to adjust the length, thickness, and intensity of these luminous blades to fit the preparation needs of any ingredient. You can pick one of these up at Nima Outpost on Jakku, or literally any other reputable vendor on a planet you'd actually want to visit. Kaiba knives. No need to force it. And we're back. So I, I think it's safe to say uh, this was just a uh, nostalgia fest full of callbacks and fan service. So I figured this would be a good one to uh, get into a variety of Star Wars references. Was it too much? Did it land? What was good? What was bad? This was one of my favorite episodes of the season only because of the callbacks. Uh, it gave you an insight into the guild a little bit. Like if you're thinking about it, like a plot, well, if you're thinking plot wise, you think about how does it advance the story of the Mandalorian? It's not the best. We do, there are certain things that eventually come up later, but not in this season perhaps. Uh, but for the most part, it was just, let's take people back to this planet because we just want to. And I, there's a lot of stuff in there that I really like. I like going back to the cantina. I like seeing the droids run the show in the cantina, which, you know, that was the cantina that the droids weren't welcome before. Now the droids are running the show and it's the same droid from Jabba's palace. That's running the show. Uh, there's even, and this, this is a deep cut that my wife, cause I watched this with my wife when it first came out of, there was actual old photography from the set in 77 of a sand trooper riding a dewback. And it's shot in like an upward perspective, looking like basically up the nose and snout of the dewback, looking up at the stormtrooper, like imposing. And they mimic that shot, frame like frame it exactly the same, but now it's with the Mandalorian on top. And it's it's just a fantastic little callback to something that regular, like a lot of people don't even know that 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 photo exists. It was in the old like 1977 novelization. They put old stills from the movie in the middle of the book. To give you pictures to look while you're reading the novel and that's one of the pictures in that old gold covered star wars novel that that's i so remember cool. so vividly and when i saw it on the screen i just like my jaw dropped and i gasped and beth was was sitting next to me was like why are you why you why is that exciting <laughs> like she didn't understand the nostalgia trip it was when i first watched it it the second and third viewing it's not as good because you know it's coming but it was definitely really really good when i saw it the first time there's also a secret cameo within the Moss Eisley Cantina. The droid bartender EV9D9 is actually Mark Hamill's voice. Um, it's synthesized or you know altered, but it is him. So that's interesting to see he's back on Tatooine. And yes, the fact that the famous line, no droids, and now it's run by droids is amazing. This really, I think, for so someone who is a casual Star Wars fan, this might just be a filler episode, but if you're, you know, really deep into the franchise, you see a lot more connections than the average person. I really like the scene with the Tuscan Raiders too. To see the Tuscan Raiders is not just being depicted as, because I mean, in the original movies, they don't they're not on the screen for very long, and they're really just depicted as just like these kind of brutal, for lack of a better term, maybe savages. Yes. The, the, this one you see them and they have like they're doing sign language and they're talking and they're being jovial and they're bartering for basically free passage through their lands and it makes them seem more of like a civilization than it, than the movies did which i thought was really was really good yeah i agree with that yeah yeah pele says um you got a lot of carbon scoring on top of his ship it's another line uh somebody i guess <laughs> that the, is a line yeah or at first is <laughs> The carbon scoring in 3PO in episode four. Yeah. You got a lot yeah. of carbon scoring here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, I think the rookie says the speeders are Carillion. Again, I don't know. I, I'm not as good as the callbacks as you guys. I'm trying here. At one What's point. So you know, actually, actually, the carbon, <laughs> the carbon scoring one, I, I didn't catch yeah, that. I, was a direct... I think you're absolutely right. What's yeah. a Carillion? So Carillion is the planet that Han Solo's from. And the, yeah. the Millennium Falcon is a Carillion cruiser. 
It's a Carillion mm-hmm. made ship. And so is the very first ship you see in Star Wars in episode four is a Carillion Corvette. Like it's they're all it's a famous planet that makes ships. Oh, OK. So it's like Michigan. Uh, yeah, it's the Michigan of the galaxy. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, so Han Solo is from Michigan. Yeah. Oh, well, OK. He's yeah. He's like um, you heard it here first. Yeah. He's like kiss. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> uh, another another callback. The uh, the Mandalorian tells the rookie that they can't approach the mercenary because she has the high ground. Callback. Callback. Yes. Yeah. Callback? Yes. Yes. No. That's a, that's callback. a callback. And and when he meets the mercenary, he's sitting in the famous Han Solo Greedo shootout booth. So that's another. There's like, there's a million in this episode. There's there's like tons and tons of them like that's what this episode is it's just and that's why i i really brought the topic up as callbacks and or fan service so it depends on those who think it may have been too extreme more lean on like hey maybe that was too much where others are like oh no those are just some fun <laughs> series of callbacks so I th- there is a barometer <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed every single one uh, you got the roar of the crate dragon it just was a very timid roar yeah i i <laughs> just it was imitating a sound i heard i, I didn't realize even the repair a... droids go back to episode one where they were introduced uh-huh. i didn't even recognize the cantina i'll be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was going entirely over my head um yeah it, it's interesting to think of fan service as an admirable goal or the goal of like an episode right to do fan service um that's that's an interesting concept i guess the point there is to reward people who are deeply invested in this world by by letting them know that their investment is actually kind of recognizable right like we we get how you invested you are in and we're going to make it recognizable to you um that seems to be the point of fan service if i understand it i think i i, I totally agree with you they're trying to like give people a reason to ooh and ah and talk on the internet about it because clicks matter but i mm-hmm. also think that the people who are making this show are legitimately fans and because i and, and we're going to talk about it in a future week in a future episode but they literally are, are showing toys in some mm-hmm. of the episodes so i feel like these people dave filoni and the directors and favreau mm-hmm. i think these were kids that were in their teens or maybe I don't know how old they are exactly, but maybe they're late, uh, early teens to twenties and they loved this stuff and they liked making these stories up. And I mm-hmm. think that you're seeing now they get to play with the toys in the sandbox, literally the Tatooine sandbox. And I yeah. think that they're calling back to it, not only because they want you as a fan to really enjoy it, but they want to enjoy it themselves. Like this is the story that they made way back mm-hmm. in the day like what what if the droids took over the bar because they're not supposed to be in there that would be a cool story like <laughs> and there you go now you have you have you know the what was his name ev9 is that is that the big guy's name i think r5 was in there uh mm-hmm. all these EV older 99 droids. yeah all these old droids are like they're i think they're just they're taking their little three and three quarter inch toys out of the closet and putting them in the sandbox yeah i, I didn't mean that as a pejorative to, to say that they're that the idea of fan service was to i i think it is it is a means of of maybe showing respect um, to to the fans, and not only just yeah. They, I mean, they get to play in this this kind of toy in this sandbox, as you're saying, which is an apt metaphor for this episode. But they're also, I mean, I think all of these like little callbacks are. I mean, it seems to like light you guys up. I'm watching you <laughs> on this episode. How how happy you are um, that that they were considerate of your investment right there's in, another in one this world there's another one at let's the ver- hear it yeah. yeah at the very end of the episode there's a dude standing there and i made a big assumption about who he was would you like to share that well assumption? i didn't know if it's spoilers is it spoilers if it's an to assumption guess? if it's a theory i mean yeah it's a high and, and it doesn't um, go beyond the current episode no well no. what's your guess i think it was boba fett that was standing there at the end of the episode you kind of just see a possible. silhouette it's quite possible yeah. because he has the uh, oh gosh what are they called when you walk uh, spurs spurs he did have that little jingle even back in episode five when he's walking mm. behind Vader you can hear that and then there's not a lot of people in the Star Wars universe that I know for their uh, jingling spurs when they walk by so I, I think they did that on purpose and we'll see if it pays off in the future or not mm. but even the even the the uh, bounty hunter Fennec Shan uh, played by is it Ming Na. 
which I was actually surprised the length of her role in this. I thought there might have been more of a continuation there. So, you know, she's a pretty well-known actress just to unfortunately get shot at the end of this episode. Yeah, she's not a lot to do. I, I was surprised too, because she has a recurring role in one of the one of the hospital shows, I think Grey's Anatomy or something like that. Um, and they they get they burn her pretty quickly <laughs> she, she's not uh she, she is not used very long in this episode i think that's true of a lot of their special guests though like mm -hmm. uh bobby moynihan was in the first episode he's only there for a hot second before you, mm -hmm. you he gets written off kind of thing uh mm -hmm. i mean like it seems like all of their i mean in a future episode there's a couple more saturday night live alums that show up uh mm -hmm. dressed as stormtroopers that come up or storm uh, scout troopers so I, like there's lots of people that kind of rotate in and out of this. And I think that a lot of them, they don't necessarily write them off completely. They could possibly come back. It is, it is star Wars and fantasy after all. Yeah. And it also, you also get the feeling with people like Bobby Moynihan and like, uh, you know, it's like the Daniel Craig appearance, right? That this is people who are fans who just kind of want to, um, who, who want to kind of have fun, right. Who wants to jump in They're not really playing a vital role. They're just sort of, um, they're, they're sort of using their celebrity to, to be a part of the game. It's a story for the grandkids. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. And what I will say, this episode was quite enlightening to me as well. Just, but I was looking forward to this so much talking about it because I think everyone here has a different investment in the Star Wars universe. We're all fans in some degree, maybe Tom to the lesser. But Chris and I viewed this episode from a completely different lens than you two guys. I was wondering going into this conversation, are we going to say, oh, wait, this was too much. It was so fan service -y. Meanwhile, Chris and I are like dissecting every little piece and you guys are like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. And actually KJ got me one on the carbon scoring. At first I was right over my head, but you're absolutely right. So I, I think that they probably did hit the mark, right? I just tend to go in circles where people are really getting into the nitty gritty and, and over analyzing. But it seems that unless you're really going deep, you could probably enjoy it at a surface level. I do not think this was one of my favorite episodes from a story perspective. I do think it was interesting how it tied into a lot of the other parts of the Star Wars franchise though. That part, I did enjoy the callbacks but not necessarily the overall plot of this one, just because I thought there were stronger ones in the series. Yeah, there's not a lot of surprises here. You, you sort of realize the bounty hunter is going to go go bad pretty quickly. I mean, he, he kind of sucks the entire episode. Um, the, the, the thing I think I enjoyed the most about it was Amy Sedaris in it, who is, uh, you know, plays the, the mechanic and she is Amy Sedaris, so she's very funny and, and you know, she made me chuckle a little bit. Would you believe some people didn't like that because they felt it wasn't Star Wars? I thought it was a nice addition myself, but there was some, oh, that doesn't seem like someone who'd be in, it, in this universe. And I like how in this show, even though it can be serious Western samurai influences, they are putting a lot of comedians in the mix here as special guests. So it's a nice dynamic. Why isn't she Star Wars? Uh, I, I'm just saying what some of oh, the... Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of the backlash was that she just didn't, they didn't imagine someone with that much comedic value within Star Wars. I guess some people were taking Star Wars very seriously. I guess and she so, yeah. is, she, she appeared more like who she is in real life in these mm -hmm. kind of roles, which I thought was great and endearing. But I did, I did see in the interweb some backlash on that performance, which I didn't agree with. I mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm 100 okay with it. I mean, yeah. If I if I want to think that the the Star Wars fantasy world is real, then there's going to be politics and crazy machinations as much as there's going to be comedians and slapstickiness. I remember the old the old the old EU stuff, the tag and bink stuff, like that was straight up comedy stuff in in like the Star Wars universe. So I'm I'm totally okay with it. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, I, I'm there too. I just that was the only thing I did see a little bit. Uh, if it was either over fan service this episode, and that they didn't feel she fit in the universe, some people. And this is not a majority, by the way. This is the loud vocal minority of the internet, right? But I, I didn't agree. I think originally it was supposed to be Watto. Ah, uh, you wombat! Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. I'm a Tradarian. Tradarian? What is it? <laughs> Toydarian. 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 <laughs> What are you waving your hand around like a Jedi? <laughs> what the what kind is that from episode one? 
Yes, he's that flying pig looking. Oh, -looking the, ju the junk dealer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, the ethnic stereotype is that what? Yes. <laughs> but he also actually, I think in later episodes, he's like poor. Episode right? three, he's Poverty. got a bit of scruff and a hat. Yeah, but no yeah, shop. Yeah, not doing too well. Not doing too well. Any? Is that you? <laughs> well, this is a first. Uh, it took two people to beat him, but I'd like to congratulate Tom and KJ for technically winning this episode. And we're going to continue on with this uh, uh, version going forward, too, to see if, if they can still continue to compete with uh, the mind, the Star Wars mind that is. I still can't believe I lost with Wombat. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> Check out our website, TalkingPicturesTrivia.com, for more information about us and our episodes. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts as well as our YouTube channel. We are extremely grateful for any positive reviews as those help others like you find us. If you like what you hear, remember to like and subscribe to our show. What's your favorite Star Wars reference and why? Leave a comment on our YouTube channel and let's continue the conversation. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. As, as always, it's always been fun to hang out and talk Star Wars with you guys. And I will strike back in the next episode, I guarantee it. Oh, there's another reference. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, you can follow us on Twitter at Talking Studios. Where can the rest of you be found? You can find me at Thomas Landon 15 on Twitter. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at KJ1000. I can also be found on Twitter at The Nickname. Join us next time as we continue The Mandalorian with Chapter 6, The Prisoner. Talk to you then. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about the difficulty level of my questions if they weren't to team up. They might still. Is it going to be the names of props? <laughs> because if that's the case it's it's <laughs> if, if it's the name of the props you guys have a, it's, a, it's a fair playing field because i don't know that crap either <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i'm kind of screwed even the names of characters <laughs> it's, it's <so> <laughs> well, let's see how it goes let's mm. see how it go. I, I got a mix of difficulty levels I, I do know now that that character is a twilight <laughs> that's not what it is. No, what is it? Twilight? Uh, Twilight. 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 Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna change it up. <laughs> yeah, even I, even I can mispronounce. It. You could find me on Thomas Layman fifteen on Twitter. Tom, can you say at Thomas Layman fifteen? <laughs> yeah. You can find me at Thomas Layman on Twitter. <laughs> no, it's Thomas Layman fifteen. Oh. <laughs> You can find me at Thomas Layman 15 on Twitter. Uh, Tom definitely said on, you can find me on Twitter. <laughs> on, Tom, on Thomas Layman. <laughs> there was another fun one. Tom's like at Thomas Layman 16. I'm like 15. He's like, no, it's 16. I'm like, Tom, it's 15. You made it. I might have also made a 16 by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs>